The voice of the drum calls. It sings a song of those who came before us and those to come. A song of survival and strength. A song of participation and voice. A song that calls us together. When we come together and participate in the 2010 census, we use this tool as the voice of all our native people. Our voice, it is in our hands. 2010 census. And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Thursday, April 29th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Drummers, music of performers, and Native American activists, speakers will share their talents and support in restoring Native American names to sacred sites. The Day of 1,000 Drums is planned for Sunday, May 30th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Portland Avenue Park in Tacoma, Washington, and it's free and open to the public. The day will be filled with keynotes, celebrity, spiritual, and elder speakers accompanied by musical appearances of many award-winning Native recording artists. Scheduled so far are recording artists Pura Fay and Keith Sokola, Annie Humphreys, and Derek Miller, comedian Charlie Hill, activist and poet John Trudell, Native elders Isidore Tom and Billy Frank. The event will be f uh, formatted potlatch style with special attention given to the elders and children's well-being and care. The Day of 1000 Drums event will focus primarily on Mount Rainier, a name chosen by explorer Captain George Vancouver to honor a British admiral. For thousands of years, the mountain was known as Tiswak, uh, Tecobet, and Tacoma by the various indigenous communities and language groups fed by the mount, many, mountains, many, many glaciers. Okay, for more information, you can go rest to RestoreNativeNames.org. The Boys Fort Band of uh, Chippewa is the recipient of a valuable collection of documents of the prominent Eli Base Forester and Land Appraiser J. William John Trigg. When Trigg passed away in 1971, he left an exhaustive record of his surveys in northeastern Minnesota forests spanning the 1920s and the 1960s. He also collected tens of thousands of pages of field notes and maps left by other 19th century land surveyors. In the 1960s, Trigg's mastery of land surveys was called upon to substantiate claims by Indian tribes that they had not been fairly paid for lands they ceded to the U.S. government in the 1880s. It resulted in greater compensation to Indians for their lands. During April, Trigg's daughter-in-law, Louise, presented a copy of his vast archive to the boys' fort. Heritage and Cultural Museum on Lake Vermilion, Minnesota. Executive Director Rose Barron says it will be valuable in helping future generations reconstruct the area's history. Five men want to be the next president of the Navajo Nation. Donald Benelli, current vice president of the nation's Shiprock chapter, filled out his paperwork in the Window Rock, Arizona capital of the nation. Rex Lee, Jim, a consul delegate from Rock Point, Arizona chapter, uh, also signed up and have both paid their $1,500 registration fee. Three others have picked up their paperwork but haven't paid the fee, which is due May 4th. They are Anthony Begay, Ben Shelley, the tribe's vice president, and Ivan Gamble. Benelli was involved in the 1989 riot in Window Rock that resulted in two deaths and served 10 years in federal prison for his involvement before his release in 2003. Benelli was cleared by the Navajo Nation Ethics and Rules Office to run for president because his last conviction was more than five years ago, according to his application to the Navajo Election Administration. The nation's next president will take the helm from Joe Shirley Jr. and stands to inherit a 55% rate of unemployment on the nation, one of the highest ever for the United States and the Navajo Nation itself. Tribes in the Dakotas are getting grants from the Shaka 
P. Mendewankenton Sioux Community, United Tribes Technical College in Bismarck, which is run by North Dakota Tribes, is getting a $1 million grant for a math, science, and technology facility. The money is contingent on the school getting an equal amount of money from other sources. South Dakota's Lower Brule Sioux Tribe is getting $1 million for a convenience store and a gas station in West Brule. The Shakopee Mendwankenton Sioux community owns the Mystic Lake Casino in Minnesota and other tribal enterprises. Florida Governor Charlie Chris has signed into a law a 20-year gaming deal with the Seminole Tribe that will pay the state about $1.2 billion in the next five years. Chris signed the bill April 28th, which gives the Seminole exclusive rights to have blackjack and other table games at three Broward County casinos and others in Mokali and Tampa. All seven tribal casinos can keep operating Las Vegas-style slot machines. After rejecting a compact last year, state lawmakers were finally able to agree this time around. Opponents of a proposed nickel and copper mine in a remote section of uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula are planning protests after an activist was arrested at the site recently. The Mining Journal of Marquette says members of the Keweenaw Bay Indian community have camped at the outcrop in Marquette County called Eagle Rock since last week. Kennecott Eagle Minerals uh, Company plans to start building its mine near the spot this year. Tribal members say Eagle Rock is a sacred place where they have conducted pilgrimages for years. Cynthia Pryor is a leader of the environmental group called the Yellow Dog Watershed Preserve. She was charged with trespassing last week and spent two nights in jail after refusing to leave the area. About 70 people met recently to discuss protest strategies. Assistant uh, Secretary of the Interior for Indian Affairs Larry Echohawk announced that savings in the Indian Affairs American Recovery and Reinvestment Act construction projects will be used to start four additional high-priority school projects in Arizona, New Mexico, and South Dakota. Favorable pricing and aggressive management of the Recovery Act uh, at large construction projects have resulted in savings of $33 million or 11% of the Indian Affairs construction allocation under the Act. Indian Affairs will use those savings to undertake the four school construction projects, putting more people to work in ways that will also make critical enhancements to benefit students in Indian country in general. The additional projects in, uh, include the Cabido School Replacement Project in Arizona for the Navajo, St. Francis Indian School Gymnasium Construction Project in South Dakota, Santa Fe Indian School Gymnasium Construction Project in New Mexico, and the Shanto Boarding School Gymnasium Construction Project in Arizona as well for the Navajo Nation. Tribal leaders canceled a meeting planned in St. Paul to discuss hunting, fishing, and gathering rights that the Leech Lake and other bands are seeking across northern Minnesota. Leech Lake Chairman Arthur LaRose says in a letter to the Department of Natural Resources Commissioner Mark Holston that the meeting would be premature. LaRose says he first wants to develop a common approach with the White Earth Chippewa Band over affirming rights that the bands believe were reserved in an 1855 treaty. Some Leech Lake uh, legal officials had said previously that members of the two Chippewa bands would fish on Lake Bemidji a day before the opening of Minnesota's walleye season this year on May 15th. Tribal leaders later urged that there be no protest and said they were working on a diplomatic solution. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for coming and viewing this news program once again. Miigwech.